Oh, we just climbed this mountain. Called Everest. Yep, we did it with no oxygen. Yeah, we did it in one and a half days. Yeah. There and back. Welcome to Grace Space. This is Senior and Junior, and we are in a new month of April, and we are also climbing a mountain. We are starting our new series called Rise Up. We're learning all about Jesus and the Easter story. I love this backpack. It's I'm my favorite. Deep packing. We're setting up camp here today. Is that okay? Have you guys ever gone hiking before? Have you ever gone camping? Have you ever gone hiking and camping? Have you ever gone portaging? I've never gone portaging. But it sounds I've driven really cool. on portage. Oh, yeah. Portage. Yeah. <laughs> portage. Portaging is when joke. you. Yeah. <laughs> portaging is when you take a, take a, a ca ca canoe. Canoe. Or a kayak. Probably a canoe. And you put it over your head and you walk across land to the next river. It's really cool. I've never done it before, but I've heard it's really cool. All right. Happy Easter. Yes. Happy Easter. Everyone. Happy Easter. Welcome here. He is risen. We are so excited. I wore my Jesus is King sweater today, mainly because I just got it and I like it. But also because Jesus is King. He has beaten death. Today, we are talking about rising up um, and how we can rise up and face anything with God's help. You know that? You can face anything with God's help. Just like how Jesus rose up again. Okay, so we're gonna do a little Easter egg mountain. Did you ever do Easter egg hunts as a kid? I did, yes. Yeah. I always destroyed my brother in them. Oh my goodness, I was always by myself because I'm an only <laughs> child. <laughs> It was great. You won every, every I won year. every year. It was really good. I won against my dog. So we're going to build our own Easter egg mountains. Um, and we're going to we're gonna see who can build the best one, I guess. And the most sturdy one. Okay. These aren't like, these aren't real eggs. Yeah, see? Yeah, nothing. We're safe. I have a really hard head too, so. Okay, here we go. Oh. Oh yeah, I'm beating you already. Um, this was supposed to be a really cool relay race, but it's okay. okay. Just start so, counting down in your head. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. Who. Um, so for the next couple, for the next while, we're going to be doing senior and junior together. So it's going to be super cool. It's going to be fun. We're going to have tons of fun. I really don't know what I'm doing. I think what we've learned these past couple months is that Pastor Shea has no clue how to build anything. <laughs> Okay, 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 yes. I've never done this before. Balance the eggs. I kind of want a chocolate bunny right now. Have you guys eaten a chocolate bunny yet? When I was younger, my mom once made a cheese bunny for me because I love cheese that much. Like, did she melt it down and put it no, in No, she just took a brick of cheese and carved it like a bunny. It was fabulous. Okay. Maybe we should give ourselves 10 more seconds. Oh. 10, 9, no! 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1! Zero. We did it! These are our Easter egg mountains. <laughs> Yours is way bigger than mine. Yeah, I threw that on at the end. Uh, well, we got pretty involved in this. Yes. And talking about being involved, the Easter story. Here we go. Um, Easter is for everyone. Did you know that? Everyone is involved in the Easter story. So. Really are. Oh, I just broke this. <laughs> Before Jesus died, Jesus made a promise. Did you know that? He made a promise to the disciples that they quickly forgot when Jesus was arrested and put on the cross. Okay, so do you know what that promise was? Uh, can you guys help us out? What was the promise? That Jesus would come, come back to life. Come back to life. It's bright. He would die, wow. and then he would rise again. So good. All right, we're going to do a little fun activity to help tell the Easter story. We get into the Easter story. Yes. Have you ever climbed something really tall before or been on a 
really challenging hike. Like this. This is a big hike. Yeah. This big, is my big hike. Starting at the bottom of something can feel intimidating. We might look up and see so many things that we have to overcome. Before Jesus did the most amazing thing ever, he had to start at the bottom too. The bottom. Right here. Jesus had to climb literally to the place of the most extreme pain. In this climb to Calvary or Golgotha, Ooh. Jesus would have overcome every painful challenge and everything was taken from him, including his life. Man. Jesus was an innocent person, but the religious leaders were angry at the way his life had upset their traditions and their belief systems. This is why they wanted Jesus to be arrested. They wanted it so badly that they took matters into their own hands and delivered Jesus to the Pilate. Jeez. Pilate was the judge or governor that would decide what to do. He had the power to free one of the prisoners, but gave the choice to the people that day. <laughs> Since they had accused him of so many wrong things, uh, of so many things, the relig religious leaders didn't think twice about stirring up the crowd to vote to release another prisoner named Barabbas instead of Jesus. And then Jesus experienced the lowest place of his life on earth. The whole crowd turned against him, Jeez. and even one of his closest friends. That's not good. He was hurt by the hands of the soldiers and experienced so much pain. He was forced to carry a cross to the place where he would suffer so much. Now, can you imagine being made fun of like that? And his pain was very real. People see his suffering, and Jesus even called out to God while he was suffering. He wondered if God had deserted him during the climb to Calvary. Death was what Jesus experienced at the end of his climb that day. Now, why did Jesus have to go through all of this? Why did he have to climb that mountain to die? He did it for me, and he did it for you, because what happened after Jesus died would make it possible for him to save us. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, the story doesn't end there. Let's find out what happens next in today's Bible story. Nice. All right. Let's imagine that we're climbing a mountain. Can you imagine? Okay. <gasps> maybe you have like a really heavy backpack on. Some hiking poles. Some hiking poles, maybe like a visor. <laughs> I don't know. Um, on the way up, you probably don't see much. Uh, maybe some trees and grass and a stream. I think that's really cool. I always love that. <laughs> but once you reach the very top, the view is breathtaking. It was hard to imagine what this view would look like on the way up. Have you ever climbed a mountain before? Yes. Yes. So have I. We, use, we both used to live in Alberta, fun fact, and there's a ton of mountains out there. So there's some really cool views to mm -hmm. see there. Yeah. It's really fun. Today, we're talking about something else that is hard to imagine, but it's true and amazing. Yeah. Today's Bible story talks about the day Jesus rose from the grave. Jesus is alive. Now, can you say that with me? One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus is, is alive. alive. Nice. nice. We heard you from here. <laughs> So three women went to the place where Jesus was buried when the Sabbath was over. Does anyone know what the Sabbath is? It's a day of rest. Yes, the Sabbath is a day of rest, and the Sabbath ended at sunset on Saturday at around 6 p.m. Hmm. All right, so in this story, they brought, um, they brought spices hmm and oil to Jesus. So um, what kind of spices do you think they brought? I personally, I have taco spice here. Do you think they brought taco spice? I don't think uh, old El Paso was around then. It's mild. <laughs> um, okay, well, they didn't bring salt or pepper and they didn't bring any garlic salt or Italian seasoning. No, I don't think the tasty spices we put on our food are what this story is talking about. Okay. The spices they brought were most likely a mixture of myrrh and oh, aloes no. used to cleanse and preserve a body in a tomb. I have aloe right here. Okay. So when you, this is from one of my plants. Oh, cool. When you rip it open. Oh, it is so wet. Yeah. It's like so sticky. It's supposed to be really good to eat as well. Do I eat it? No. <laughs> I'm allergic. <laughs> Yeah, so when they arrived to this, this, the tomb, the stone, oh my goodness. When they arrived to the tomb, the stone that served as a door to the front of the tomb was not there. And when the women went inside the tomb, 
they saw someone dressed in a white robe sitting inside. No. That was definitely not what they were expecting. So the man told them, Jesus is not here. Jesus has risen. Mm -hmm. The women were both scared and shocked. I would be too. Like you're expecting something and it's not there. The man told them to go tell Jesus' disciples that Jesus was alive. Yeah. Now, we do a lot of fun stuff at Easter, like Easter egg hunts, yep. or we decorate little eggs with paint, um, or we play different fun games. But we have to remember that Easter is so much more than that. Easter is all about remembering what Jesus did for us. That's right. And Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead, so you and I can have a relationship with God. Yeah. So, we look into the mountains... When you, when you look into the mountains, when you look out, you see um, some beautiful some beautiful clouds. Oh, look at that. One of our clouds <laughs> looks Just like... happens to have some words on it. Our big idea. Wow. Which is? Jesus overcame death. Death. That's right. So good. Man. Can you imagine being at Jesus' tomb the morning, like that morning with, with those women? I think I'd feel like all sorts of different emotions, like right. scared, happy, yeah, freaked out. Yeah. Also, there's like there was like an angel there that wasn't Jesus. Yeah. And like I, I'd, I'd be a little fearful too, not knowing what's happening. Anxiety, mm -hmm. amazement. These are all like excitement. There's so many emotions. Oh, cloud flew away. No. We've passed it's, on. It's really, really fast. But that must have been quite the amazing experience to be involved of. Right? In. And I think so. how do you feel to know that Jesus overcame death? How do you feel that Jesus overcame death? What kind feel... of emotions does that give you? I get like really excited. Mm -hmm. Like, and I just feel like relieved. That's the word. Because it's like Jesus had taken our spot in death and he had like beaten death and had given us a way to live forever with God. Mm -hmm. And like before Jesus, that wasn't a thing. So like, that's why we celebrate Easter. That's why we celebrate Jesus because he, he was both fully man and God and he gave his life for us, for you. And that's why we celebrate Easter because he gave his life, he overcame death, he beat death, and gave us a way to heaven. It's mm -hmm. amazing. So good. All right. Now, I hope you guys remember last month's memory verse to That's memory, right. but this month we got a new one. It's coming from Romans 10, verse 9. All right, are you ready? I'm... Let's go! Okay. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord... And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There you go. We'll do it one more time. Okay, here we go. So you guys can learn this one too. All right, three, two, one. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Nice. Wow. Romans? Romans 10. 10 9. 9. So good. So good. All right, well, we're going to pray. We're going to ch check out what Carl's doing. We also have Callie that you can check out too. And she's our preschool friend. You can see what she's doing. And yeah, um, we will see you guys next week. But let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for us. Thank you for loving us so much. Um, thank you for giving your life so that we can have a relationship with God, Jesus. Thank you so much for what you did on the cross. Thank you for overcoming death and giving all of us good news that we can share with others. And will you just give everyone who is watching and listening just peace in their hearts, knowing that you are the Savior, that you are the King of Kings. In your holy mighty name, everyone said, Amen. All right, friends, we'll be climbing up the mountain a little further next week. We will see you later. Bye. Have a good Easter. Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm... And welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. 
Hello and welcome there, kiddos. Welcome to Grow TV. Hope you all are doing well. I just want to start off by introducing someone special, <laughs> Mr. Knuckles. So say hello, Mr. Knuckles. Hello, everybody. I would say it's good to see you, but I don't have real eyes. <laughs> You're so funny, Mr. Knuckles. <coughs> What's up? You right, Vanessa? Oh, sorry, that's my bad. Uh, let's say hello to my real friend, Vanessa. Hello! Say hello! Say hello, don't be rude, guys. Say hello. I don't think they can hear you. Oh, really? Well, okay. Say hello to Vanessa! No, because they're watching on screen. Oh, <laughs> got it, sorry. No worries, thanks for having me, Carl. I'm super happy to be here. And we're happy to have you. What's that? I haven't heard that sound in ages. That means we got some super secret mail. Super secret mail? What does that mean? It means exactly that. The piece of mail is super secret. So close your eyes. Wait, what? Super secret mail only shows up when you close your eyes super tight. Okay. Wow! <laughs> super secret mail. Wow. Told you. Now let's see what's in here. I have no idea what's in here. Whoa! This is earth shattering. What did it say? I can't believe this. Why? Who? How? What? Ha! Ah! Are you going to tell me? I can't. It's super secret. And even if I were to tell you, I can't. Because it's super secret. And the message would freak you out. Just let me look. What? I told you. I'm kidding. I already knew this. Did you not know? Of course not. Not that you did either. Of course I did. It's in the Bible, Carl. Excuse me? I mean, come on. It's the big thing in the Bible. Open up your Bible, Carl, to the book of Mark, chapter 16. It's talking about how the two Marys in Siloam went and bought spices to visit the place where Jesus was buried. Now, what kind of spices do you think they bought? Cayenne pepper, smoked paprika, or maybe something like Tony's Cajun. <laughs> well, I can safely say it wasn't any of those. It was the spice people used to honor the people they loved in those times. Oh, that makes more sense. It says that they went to the tomb and the big rock in front of the tomb was rolled away. Wait a second, wasn't it supposed to be covered? Yes, sir, but that day was a whole lot more different than any other. You see? There was a man sitting there in a white robe where Jesus' body should have been laying. What? Jesus wasn't there? Somebody moved the body? Keep reading. It says the ladies were alarmed, but the man said they shouldn't be. He said Jesus was risen? Keep reading. Okay, then the man told them that they needed to tell the disciples that Jesus has risen up and that he is head of the Galilee, just like Jesus had said before. What in the world? Told you so. How in the world did I never know this? My whole life I've lived not knowing that Jesus rose from the dead? No way, Carl. You've known about this for a while. What are you talking about? I can never forget such an important thing. You always said that you're a pretty forgetful guy. Don't you remember always saying that? I don't... you... Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. It's just that I've loved Jesus my whole life because I know how good he is and how much he loves me. But I forgot how much. I mean, he died. Yes. And then he rose again. Yes, again. It's so unbelievable that I forgot. What do you mean? Well, we forget amazing things all the time. The fact that we can make noises with our mouth and people can understand. The fact that we're living on a giant rock that's floating through a huge amount of space. And that the Son of God died for us and rose three days later. All because he loves us. How awesome is that? It's very awesome. It's very easy to take all these wonderful truths for granted because they've always been there. I'm so glad we had this super secret mail to remind us today. Because really, this message shouldn't be super secret. We should tell everybody. I agree. I love it what that piece of mail said. Wait, I forgot what it said. What did it say? <laughs> it says Jesus overcame death. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's awesome. Not only is that great news, but that's our big idea. <laughs> Today's big idea is Jesus overcame death. So let's say it out loud to the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus overcame, overcame death. death. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Right. Well, I learned a lot today. I'm glad. Oh, look. I found another envelope. Oh, really? What does it say? It says there's something on Carl's sweater. Huh? I don't see. Oh. <laughs> gotcha. See you next week, kids. Yeah, whatever. Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of
tent, which is super hard. We laughed a lot and couldn't seem to get the poles right, but finally we did it. It was cool watching my dad and mom, seeing how they fix the problems together and help my brother and me have fun. We sang songs and talked about things we saw on the trail leading to our campsite. I realized something, it surprised me. But at home, I always use my iPad or watch TV and don't really spend time with my family as much. When we were on the trail, we spent more time talking and helping each other. It helped me feel close to my family and I really like that. Take a look at this picture. Isn't it fun? You know what else is fun? Today's Bible story. Let's listen together. It's time for our Bible story. Today we will learn another fun story about Jesus. So after Jesus rose up to life from the place where he was buried, he appeared to his disciples, his friends, who followed his teachings and loved him very much. They saw Jesus go through really painful things. They thought he was dead, but now he was standing right in front of them. At first they were afraid, but Jesus told them, don't be afraid, and soon they weren't afraid anymore. They started to believe that Jesus was alive again and in front of their very own eyes. And then he did something that made them extra sure. He showed them his hands. His hands had scars that proved it was him. The same Jesus that was on the cross just a few days before. When something happens to you, like scanning your knee, when you're playing outside, usually you can see where you were hurt while it's getting better. Jesus showed them the places in his hands that were on the cross, and the disciples were able to see where his wounds used to be. Jesus went through all of that because he loved the world and wanted to save us all. When they saw the scars on Jesus' hands, the disciples knew without a doubt that it was truly Jesus. He really did raise up back to life, and because of what they saw with their own eyes, they would have the courage to tell others what they saw. Our family really connected on the trip. I talked to a little squirrel. That was super fun. And my brother and I made funny and bubbly sounds like the water that was flowing next to the trail. That Bible story was something great though, wasn't it? I imagined the disciples were on a journey too. Kind of like my family. They had to hike through all sorts of things together. Jesus brought them all together and helped them to believe. And Jesus does that for us too. No matter who we are, Jesus connects us to each other. When we believe in Jesus, together we can do things we couldn't do by ourselves. Well, gotta run now. I'm still trying to catch up on the sleep that I missed while I was camping. Thanks for tuning in and growing with me. Peace out.